y'all. Today we are going to be making this super versatile travel wrap. While it is basically a rectangle of fabric, adding some buttons, buttonholes, and a hem around the edge makes it super flexible to wear in a lot of different ways, as you can see. So check out all the ways you can wear this, and then let's start making. here that is 60 inches wide by 30 inches tall. And let's talk a little bit about fabric selection for this project. So I'm using a pretty thin, um, not quite see-through, but you can tell that it's very drapey, French terry knit. This has um, not too much horizontal stretch, but it does have a bit of vertical stretch too, and it recovers back to its same shape. The amount of stretch and the amount of drape, especially, this is a pretty, almost like a lightweight knit, tissue knit in drape, but it's not see-through. And that's really ideally what you want to find for this project, because that's gonna give you the most different ways to wear it. So you're looking for a knit that's not see-through, but has a lot of good drape. You probably want it to have a little bit of polyester or spandex in it too, so that it has that good recovery. Um, anything that's 100% cotton or fleece, those things are not going to work as well because they're going to be too thick for some of the ways we want to wear this. So the next thing I need to do is because knit fabrics don't fray, I only have to fold the edges in once. So I'm going to go ahead and go all the way around my rectangle here and press all the edges in um, three quarters of an inch. And that's going to give me an area to put my buttons and buttonholes to turn this into the versatile wrap that we're going to make. If you wanted to do this in a no-sew way, you could use fus double-sided fusible stuff like Wonder Under to bind those edges down and hem them. I'm going to stitch them. And I want to show you a little bit of a trick here on the corners. So we're going to do some mitered corners because they're prettier, I think. So when you creased and pressed your fabric in both directions, you're gonna get a little square here in the corner. So if you unfold it all, you can kind of see there's a square there. And to make a mitered corner, if you cut across that square diagonally, so you're cutting just the triangle piece off, and then you want to take the two creases that are still on the square and match them to the two other creases. So you're folding it in just that amount. And what that allows you to do is then when you fold in the sides where you've already creased them, you get this nice little mitered corner where the corners all match up nicely. And I like to add a couple of pins to hold that in place. And then when I get over to the machine, I can stitch right on top of that. And it's just a little bit nicer of a finish on the corners when I'm stitching around. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to the machine and I'm gonna stitch all the way around the edges of my folded in edges. And I'm actually gonna stitch right to the edges of my corner. So I'll go like this and then up and then down and then back down the other side to reinforce these corners a little bit as well. 
I will be using a stretch stitch to do this. And if you're not familiar with stretch stitching or with knit fabrics, I'm actually gonna link two videos down in the description, but also at the end of this video, there'll be links to them so that you can go ahead and check out different types of knit fabrics and what to look for, and also different types of stretch stitches and what to use. So I've got my machine set for a stretch stitch that is one millimeter wide, 3.5 millimeters long. I'm threaded up with gray thread and I am now going to pick an edge and I wanna start in the middle of the edge and then I'm just gonna stitch around. Now when I get to the corner here, I'm gonna go ahead and remove my first pin and stitch right up to that corner. And then stop and turn and stitch into the corner. Stop, take one stitch directly across so that I'm on the other side of the corner. Remove the other pin and turn it so I can come back down the other fold. And if your fabric kind of gets sucked in there, you may need to hand feed until it gets enough where it will, the feed dogs are pulling it itself. And then continue down the next side. When you get back around to where you started, then you can cut your threads and pull your wrap out of the machine. And then let's talk about how to mark the buttonholes. Okay, now that we've gotten the edges of the project sewn, it is time to mark the buttons and buttonholes. And I'm gonna be using this little tool here. This is called a Simflex gauge. And what it does is it helps me evenly space buttonholes without having to measure. So I'll put a link in the description of where you can get this. You can also use your measuring tape and math to space out the buttonholes. So I want to start three inches in. So I'm gonna put my ruler here. I'm gonna start three inches in from one edge, and then I want to space eight buttonholes across, ending at three inches in from the other edge. So I'm actually just gonna use my Simplex gauge here, space it out, and double check how many inches. Look at that, it worked out perfectly. So, and then I'm gonna mark where I want those buttonholes to be. And I'm just gonna put a dot on each spot and I'm using um, washable Crayola marker, just regular old, find it in the school supply section. I like these a lot as marking tools because they're cheap, they're plentiful, and they wash out of most fabrics pretty easily. So, I'm putting dots here and that's where I will be stitching my buttonholes and I'm gonna have them right on that doubled up part of the fabric. And then I'm going to turn, so I'm working on one of the long sides of the fabric here, and I want to mark out, this time I want the spacing the same, but I only want to do six buttonholes this way. So the spacing here between my buttonholes is about three and a half inches. Um, and I am just not going to use those first two and this time I also only want to come in two inches from the edge so here's where I'm going to space my next ones and then I'm going to rotate to the next corner so on this long edge I am measuring two inches in from the edge and then I'm going to space out six buttonholes Now not all of these are gonna be buttonholes, some of these are gonna be buttons, and I'm actually gonna put up a diagram of which ones are buttons and which ones are buttonholes. Um, but something is gonna happen on each of these dots. You're either gonna be sewing a button or you're going to be sewing a buttonhole. So that's why I just go ahead and mark them with dots for now. Okay, across the short edge, 
Remember I'm measuring three inches in from the edges and then I'm going to space out my buttonholes or buttons, my dots at any rate. And then I have one side left to do, one long edge, measuring in two inches from the corner and doing six dots. Now, let's look at the diagram of which ones of these are going to get buttonholes and which ones are going to get buttons. Basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to alternate where the buttonholes and the buttons are because that gives us more options for how we want to configure this and then that gives you more options for using this. So check out, you can see which ones of these, the round ones are buttons and the slashes are buttonholes. So you then need to go on your fabric and the ones that are going to be buttonholes, I like to go ahead and extend those. Um, I am using half inch buttons, so I'm going to extend each of my marks to half an inch by my marking a quarter inch on each side of the dot. And then I know which ones to sew as buttonholes and which ones to sew as to hand sew my buttons on. Okay, so go ahead and do that according to the diagram, and then I'm going to meet you at the sewing machine to show you how I stitch these buttonholes. Okay, I've gone ahead and I have put my buttonhole foot on. I've selected the stretch buttonhole stitch on my machine. If your machine doesn't have that, you may want to just use a regular buttonhole stitch, but I have a specific buttonhole for stretch fabrics. And then I'm going to line up the end of my mark with the marks in the buttonhole foot because it will stitch backwards. So just put that in there, line it all up, lower the presser foot, and then all I have to do is press down the presser foot and the buttonhole is going to stitch itself out. So there we go. Now I just have to repeat that. buttonhole in half, use some very sharp scissors, and then just snip to the edges. And now that I'm done with all of those, then you can rewind this video back to the beginning and check out all the different ways to wear this.